And so I see we have a low connection, but God bless everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We thank you for all that you do. And go ahead and hit this on your share button and invite people out and tell them about uh, Divine Insight Ministries. We are here every morning at five, or six o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time and seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So God bless you. Good to see you, Sister Sparkle. Good to see everybody. Charmaine, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome, 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 welcome. We're going to do a part two today, Wisdom Over Sorcery. Part two, Wisdom Over Sorcery. Okay, so let's get ready for that. We thank you. God bless everybody. Amanda, God bless you. And uh, take heed to the announcements. All those who are uh, going to be a part of the intercessory team, prayer partner teams at Divine Insight Ministries, you'll be notified uh, sometime this week. Okay, good to see you, Mama. Good to see you, Sister Lisa. God bless you. Tell Dad I said hello. God bless everybody, and let's get ready. Go ahead and hit that share button. Share this on your page. Invite some people out. If God leads you to a watch party, remember to hit those thumbs and hearts. That constantly activates the page in Facebook and causes us to be able to reach many people, okay? Good to see you, Sister Hodges. God bless you. Cousin, good morning. Good morning, man. So let's go ahead. Uh, we have many videos on YouTube. I didn't get a chance to load up yesterday's video, uh, but I'll try to do that again today because I'm trying to stay up. Because there's a lot of people who watch us from uh, from foreign countries and, and all they have is YouTube. And so I want them to, to be able to walk with us and grow together in that. So let's get ready to move into part two today. Wisdom over sorcery. Good to see you, brother Michael, man. Love you so much. Thank God for our brotherhood, man. You are a blessing to me. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to be able to stand before your people. But first, I give you praise for all that you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for another day. Thank you for another hour to be able to speak your word. We thank you for your love, your kindness, and your mercy. Touch us this morning, God. Allow us to walk faithfully in our assignment and to be obedient to what you have given us. We thank you, Lord, that every day you make it clear to us of who we are, our identity, and our destiny. Thank you, Lord. Allow the teacher anointing to be on us this morning so that we can grow in you and become better husbands and better fathers, and better wives, better sons, better daughters. We know, God, that you are a God of family. You are a family, God, and that you instituted the family. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless your people. Give us strength. Give us clarity. Give us wisdom to know how to deal with any type of sorcery or any type of bondage. Give us wisdom. You don't do anything without wisdom. And you said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of you. And so give us that wisdom. Holy Spirit, we're listening this morning. Wisdom, speak to us. You cry out in the street, wisdom speak to us. And we thank you, Lord, for this warning. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. We give you praise. Let the word be a lamp unto our feet and a light into our pathway. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we bless you and we thank you, Lord. Touch your people right now. Open their minds. We send angels to their mind, north, east, south, and west, that we hear the word from all four directions and have a clear understanding of how you move and then how we breathe and how we live in you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you this morning. We love you, people. And we thank you, Lord, for the spirit of love that is the center of all things. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want a lot. I want to teach you this morning and share with you about wisdom over sorcery. If you have not watched any of the teachings yet, please go back and watch. Um, this is probably number seven or number eight video on sorcery alone. Okay, good to see you, Brother Michael. Man, I love you so much. And so please go back and watch those. Let's go into it. I'm coming out of Exodus chapter 7, uh, verses 10 through 13. It's really 1 through 13, but we had verse 10, and we're dealing with when Aaron and Moses begin to, re to release the rod to confront Moses. The first time that they are confronting Moses, it is really a battle between false perceptions and truth. It is dealing with uh, when God is behind you and when there's people who are serving anything outside of God and the confrontation that it takes to release God's people. Uh, remember here, good to see you, Prophet Brian, that it takes confrontation to be free. You'll never be able to be free from any level of bondages without a form of confrontation. You can't change what you're not willing to confront. And so God is raising up the spirit of boldness in you and the spirit of courage in you to be able to face, watch this, the enemy, the enemy that may be in you, what's in me. Most of the time, our greatest enemies 
are things that are on our mind. Our greatest battle is the battle of the soul. It's the battle of mindsets. It's the battle of agreements and alignments and reasoning. The Bible talks about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 that our that our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds are emotional ties. And so most of the time, you're not battling the devil. Most of the time, you're battling a system of thinking that comes from the devil or originate from the devil, anything that's anti-Christ. Christ is about freedom. The whole thing about Christ is so that you can be free, so that you can serve him in liberty, okay? And so what the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, is, which is the Spirit of God, and we'll get into that, uh, deals with the, the Spirit of truth. And so truth comes to make you free, it comes to make you free, okay? And so when you understand that, the whole thing about God is to bring you into a place that you know who you are. Two powerful things that you need to know in life in order to even begin your journey of freedom is your identity, okay? We are always fighting for our identity. Who are you? Okay, Adam, where are you? And so you're fighting for your identity and we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So just like African-American people feel like over here in America, we never, we don't have our original names, we don't have our original land, and we go through all of that. Well, that's the same thing spiritual. Do you have your original name in which God, what is the name that God has tied to you? Not the name that your mama gave you, but the very nature in which you should operate out of. The word name really, it's, it's symbolic of, of the nature of a thing. And so when you name a thing, you're dealing with the nature of a thing. So what is the name? In the name of Jesus, is really in the nature of Christ or in the nature of humanity, okay? And so this is very key. And so, but we don't know our name. You don't know your identity. Who are you? This is my beloved son. And so most people never walk into sonship. Uh, a lot of times church teach a lot of things about being a sheep and, we, and they keep people immature and keep them uneducated and they, they never become thinkers and I've been saying that a lot. They never become thinkers of themselves or thinkers tied to the Holy Spirit, the eternal law that is within you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Out of your belly, that's inwardly, shall flow the rivers of life. The kingdom of God is not here or there, but the kingdom is from within. So true understanding of self and understanding of God comes from the eternal voice voice from within. And the Lord God came walking in the cool of the day. The voice of the Lord God came walking. The voice of the Lord God came walking in agreement with who Adam was. Walk means to agree. How can two walk together unless they agree? And so when you understand that, you must understand your identity. And your first fight is understanding who I am and I'm not going to accept anything outside of who God called me to be and be that in him, okay? In him, I live and move and have my being. Good to see everybody. God bless you. And so identity, the second thing you fight for is your destiny. You you fight for two things, major in life. If you're teaching children, two things you need to teach your children. How to understand who they are in God. Who, who are they that identify to identify you when you go to the bank? You have to have ident a signature card to identify, is this you? We have a lot of uh, uh, identity theft because people are using your name, which means give they have ability to your credit or things that are credible to you. Watch this, because they have your name. And so you have to understand your identity. The enemy greatest fights in any form of sorcery, bondage, control, religion. It's all about you never walking in the fullness of who you are from your identity. Who are you? This is my beloved son. Jesus was able to master the three levels of temptation because he knew who he was. And so if you read the scripture carefully in Luke chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 4, it says, if you be the son of God, if you be the son of God. And the question in life with every form of control is, are you who you say you are? And if you be, then there should be some signs. There should be some things that you're not willing to compromise. There should be some things that you will not fall into because you know who you are. But when you don't know who you are, then you will use authority and power for the wrong reason and you will turn the stone into bread. You will turn something that was permanent into temporary needs for your own selfish gain because you're hungry. Or you'll take the kingdoms of this world. Okay? So you'll you bow down to those because you don't know who you are. 
are. Or you will commit you'll commit suicide and you'll kill yourself and you'll go to the very thing that you love, which is church or whatever it may be, and you'll kill yourself in that very passion because you don't know who you are. And so all sorcery is a distraction from identity. All sorcery is a distraction to have you never work on who you are or never work towards your uh, destiny. Two things. And so your identity and your and, and your um, um, destiny, okay? All forms of sorcery, control, religion is, is a distraction, is a destruction against your identity and your destiny. Well, if you don't know who you who you're supposed to be, then you may never know that you're in sorcery because you don't understand that that was never your design. And so you may function in dysfunction because you never knew or you never became aware, okay? Or, or you never had a fight for you. You had a fight for others. You build for others, but you never build for you. You love, you happy being on a tree, but you never want to release the tree that's in you, okay? So you have seeds in you as an apple, but you rather, you rather let somebody boast on how well you are on their tree instead of release the tree that is in you. And so these are the very key things. And But the but the only way to handle bondages, sorcery, witchcraft, warlocks, uh, false prophets, false apostles, religion, uh, abuse, depression, any of those things, the only way to properly be free from them is you have to use wisdom. You have to know wisdom. This is where the wise have dominion. This is where the wise domain is. When you do music, you have to have your music domain. Okay? You have to have your license certified as a your name has to be domain. And so you have to understand where the wisdom, where the wise have dominion. And so without wisdom, you'll never be able to conquer sorcery. Never. Because the the, the counterfeit looks too much like the like the real thing. They have sometimes of the same expression, sometimes it operates operates in a power that looks like the power of God. The enemy doesn't have authority, but he does have power. And so things like that. So you have to have wisdom. Wisdom is what's going to free you. It takes wisdom, strategy, uh, cunningness in a sense. Even, even the serpent was more wise than any other beast of the field. He was more cunning. Okay, and so you have to be so you have to be have the wisdom of God to deal with the cunningness of the devil. You have to have the wisdom of God to deal with the cunningness of the system of darkness It's very cunning. And this is why a lot of people are under hypnosis, even in church. They're under spells and don't even know it from music, from entertainment, from fashion in everything, because sorcery has the ability. It ties to everything that we've ever dealt with in life. Anything that's in life, sorcery. He wants his hands on it. That's why he's the prince of this world. We, the children walk according to the course of this world. The children of disobedience. And so it is. it infiltrates everything. But unless you have sat under wisdom, have allowed God to show you the proper application. Wisdom is the proper application of knowledge. You can have knowledge, but without wisdom, you won't apply what you know. Okay? And so people say knowledge is power. Knowledge is only power when it is activated in the right way that makes you effective and not just busy. Okay, make you effective and not just busy. Good to see you, Pastor D. Good to see everybody, Sister Dick Journey. Good to see everybody. And so it's so important that you understand wisdom. A lot of people see the kingdom but never walk in it. They never walk in divine principles, the kingdom of heaven. That's what's really what's within. These are our principles that we apply on earth. This is the wisdom. And, and, and so if you never use that application, you may know better. I used to be a drug alcohol, I'm a drug counselor for uh, drugs and alcohol for about 13, 14 years of my life. And most of the people that I was training and teaching how to be free from alcohol or drugs, those people could teach the class. They had relapsed four, five, six, seven, eight times. They didn't have, they didn't lack knowledge. They didn't lack illumination. They lack proper application of the illumination of the information. You have information, that's knowledge. Then you have illumination, that's understanding the knowledge. And then you have wisdom. And so in all that getting, get knowledge. Watch this, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. You must get those three. So knowledge is just information. It puts you in formation, okay? That's knowledge. You read a book, you get knowledge. But if you don't understand what you read, even though you gathered knowledge, you have no understanding of the knowledge. You have no illumination of the information, 
okay? You have to have illumination of the information. Well, once you get illumination, once it is, it becomes alive to you, you have an understanding, you can submit under these principles and stand upon them because you submit to these under submit standing viewpoint. Because of that, now you have a place to have a foundation you can hold. That's understanding. But if you don't use the understanding that you know from the knowledge that you read, then you have no wisdom, see? And so it still doesn't benefit you, that even though you've been in rehab four, five, six times, even though you've been married three, four times, even though you've been to five different seven churches, you still are under a sorcery because you keep not using the application that frees your mind, that frees your soul, okay? I'm giving you a lot this morning. And so you have to use wisdom. It's how you apply what you learn. You can listen to me every single day, but if you're not applying that wisdom, then what good is it to you? Okay? You have to understand. Okay? <laughs> That's right. Right. You're right, Sister Journey. Most people don't fall in what they don't know. They fall in what they don't apply. Absolutely, it's what they don't apply. Wisdom is the proper application. See, and so I used to go outside without a hat on, and I would catch a cold. My boy would say, "Boy, you know better." She didn't say you. You know better. That wasn't wisdom. You didn't use no wisdom. In other words, you knew better, but you didn't do better because you didn't use any wisdom. You did not apply the information. And so, wisdom to deal with any form of bondage. And most of the times, and I believe absolutely all the time, God will never allow you to be in a situation. He didn't give you warning, but you didn't use wisdom. People who do not take heed to warnings, it's not wise. The Bible calls them a fool, call you a fool when you don't use wisdom, okay? And so a lot of things have snared us and trapped us and we complaining and crying. It's because we don't use the application of the knowledge that God has given us. And you back in the same problem again. You're dealing with the same type of depression. You're back into another church that's using you. you back into another marriage that doesn't appreciate you because you didn't apply, watch this, you didn't apply the wisdom to that level of sorcery. You have to use wisdom, okay? Very key, so I want you to understand that too. That's the prerequisites of the teaching for today. Point number one, you gotta understand your spiritual identity above your worldly covering. You must understand your spiritual identity above your worldly covering. Now, this is something that I'm learning even more and more. Uh, your spiritual identity comes from God, okay? You'll find out all through the Bible, God refers to things uh, before they happen, he'll say they already happened. And so when he talks to Jeremiah, Jeremiah is a young boy, and he doesn't, he's not clear on his identity and who he is in God and his calling. God says something very powerful to Jeremiah. He said, before you was in your mother's womb, I knew you, Jeremiah chapter one, verse one. I knew you. He says, I, and I formed thee in the belly before you was created. He's talking about the beginning that we have with God before we, before we began. And so when you understand that, your spiritual calling, it comes from a spiritual place. Now, you got to understand that because, and, 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 and I, I listened to Brother Berean, you know, he's been coming on, and I thank God for him, a powerful, powerful man of God in the kingdom of God. And he been, he's always saying something. I mean, if you listen to him, it's just the wisdom that he has. But he talked about this as a spiritual book. And even though we, we don't want, we want to question the book and not believe in the book, it's a spiritual book. And absolutely right. It's about spiritual principles to manifest on earth so we can bring it together. The oneness, okay? The oneness of the dualities of our world. We have a spiritual world. We have a natural world. You got to understand the dualities that man, when man sinned, he lived in both, both worlds, okay? Before he sinned, he only knew God. That's it. Only knew God. The minute that he sins, now he has the knowledge of good and evil, okay? And so now he knows both worlds. Both worlds always exist, but both worlds did not have access to. And so this is why when you read the fifth chapter of Genesis, he says, now they're like us knowing good and evil. Now they're like us in the knowledge. Not only are they like us in the spiritual being, but they like us in knowledge, knowing good and evil. So you have to understand your spiritual identity. So I'm going to give you some examples. Christ said we was hid in him. So when he died, we died. Okay. That's spiritual because I didn't die when Christ died. I wasn't even born. But spiritually, I did. 
Okay, the reason why we can say we are the redeemed, you only can redeem something that you once own. And so I'm spiritual because I say I'm redeemed. When Job said one thing I know that my redeemer lived, how did you know about a redeemer, Job, when you're supposed to be the oldest book of the Bible or the, one of the first original books of the Bible? How did you know about a redeemer? God revealed some knowledge to him from a spiritual place. And so we're spiritual. And I always say we're spiritual having human experiences. We're not human having spiritual experiences. We are spiritual, okay? That's why when you die or when you separate it, they'll say he, he died. Well, every Everything that we saw in him that made him him is still here. It's here. His intestines, his liver, it's still in the body, but it's not functional. It's not working because the spirit of who he is, is gone. And so we are spiritual. That's very key to understand your spiritual identity. Okay. And so you come from God. You're made in the image and the likeness of God. God is a spirit. And they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. I'm giving you a lot today. And so when you understand your spiritual identity, that I'm spiritual, but I've been placed on earth to have dominion over the fish of the seas, the fowls of the air, and everything that creeps upon the earth. If I've been given dominion over a physical world, even though I am a spiritual world, I must know how to handle the, the physical world from the spiritual instruction. Okay, there's a reason why I need spiritual instructions. It's a reason why he gives me all spiritual gifts in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When I'm in Christ, I am in a heavenly place. Christ is really the representation. That mindset, the mind of Christ is really the representation of the spiritual place. The safe place, the salvation place is in Christ. So all those who came into the ark were saved. That was it. All you had to do was get in the ark and you were saved by being in that place. Jesus become, Jesus Christ become the physical manifestation of a a mental of a mental, watch this, theology is for psychology. Remember, the studying of God is so that you can understand how to move in your mind. The winning of the soul, it's the psyche, the saving of the soul. So theology is for psychology. And so when they went into the ark, watch this, they were saved. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. It becomes new because you're in Christ. But Christ is the mindset. Christ is not his last name. It is the mindset that humanity needs. So Jesus comes down as an example. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. He comes down as an example. I'm going to show you how to have the right mind in humanity, in flesh, and how to bring flesh under total total subjection to the voice of the Father. It's all about really meeting the Father. Even though we want to be Christians, the whole purpose is to know the Father. Jesus says, I do nothing of my own. I only do with the Father. So it's about really introducing us to the Father, to know God as a Father. The Old Testament don't talk a lot about Father. It talks a lot about God. But in the New Testament, we see that he, watch this, transitions a relationship into the fatherhood. Okay? Now, this is so important because when you understand the will of the Father for your life, it is not to be bound by any other thing but by the love that he has given you, okay? Okay, very key. So when you understand your spiritual identity, this will give you the original purpose of who you are, the identity of who you are, your destiny, and your assignment. So when you deal with things on earth, you're going to have to deal with it now because the kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violence takes us by force. The kingdom mindset always suffers violence against the worldly perspective against kingdom agenda. It's all about building the kingdom agenda. We are kingdom people. Repent for two reasons. You repent for the remission of your sin and you repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. There is a mindset that Jesus wanted to introduce them to. The real etymology of the word repent really deals with changing how you see things or changing how you think about things. It is the metro changing of the mind. And when you change your mindset about things, I always say, if you change the way you see things, the way you see things will change. And so the whole thing to be free from sorcery is changing your mindset concerning 
okay? And many of us, we are under a earthly mindset. The world told you how to think. The world told you what to think. The world told you what to wear. All these different things. So you really don't know who you are from a divine perspective. You're walking as if you're human, having spiritual experiences. You're not living earth as a spiritual free agent from a spiritual place. Watch this citizenships of heaven, watch this, of the kingdom, but having earthly experiences. And your whole purpose down here is to be conformed to the image of his son and walk in total dominion over the fish in the sea, the fowls of the air, and over everything that creeps upon the earth. And not just, those things are not just physical fish. It's dealing with ideas that are below you, ideas that are above you, and concepts that are on the same level. You are to have dominion, okay? Very key. It, but you need wisdom to walk this on this earth. So uh, the word became flesh, dwelt among us, watch this, and we seen the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace, Noah saw grace in the eyes of God and truth. The law came by Moses, but uh, grace and truth come by Jesus Christ. So I walk in the power. Grace is the empowerment. I'm saved by grace through faith. Watch this. So it is the empowerment to walk in truth. And when you take on the mind of Christ, you really have, you literally have the empowerment from a soulless place or from the psychology place, not a carnal place. Good to see you, Pastor Peterson. But from the, but from the soul now that is regenerated regenerated through the word of God by the father, the, the husband man, the spirit man. Now I can walk in total freedom away from all forms of sorcery. So point number one, you must understand your spiritual identity above your worldly covering, okay? This is very key to sorcery. Now, when I talk about worldly covering, I'm talking about four aspects that the world builds your identity on. Four aspects that the world builds your identity on. If you're just coming on, please hit that share button. Share this on your page. Please do that. And, and please do a, 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 a party, watch party. And, and, and we're showing where we're going. Watch this. Spiritual identity. You must understand who you are from a spiritual perspective, knowing that, okay, versus a worldly covering. Four aspects that the world give you. The world tells you you are based upon these four aspects. First of all, based upon your race. One, your race. And so when I say race, if I, if I was explaining these points, race would be black. I'm black. So what, what color are you? I'm a black man. I'm a white man. I'm Chinese. I'm Hispanic. Okay. Race. So we try to identify ourselves from race. Okay. Watch this. Second is gender. Are, are you a male or are you female? Are you transgender? And so these are the things that the enemy attack or the world wants to cover you to identify you based upon your race. The world wants to identify you based upon your gender. That's two. Thirdly is your, your clan or your tribe. What I mean by that is what family do you come from? So mine would be Jenkins. I come from the Jenkins tribe. You may come from the, the Brown uh, tribe. You may come from the Kaufman tribe or the Kaufman clan. That's your last name, okay? That's how you identify. Who are you? I'm a Brown. I'm a Jenkins. Uh, I'm a Owens, okay? All these things to identify you. So your race, black for me, gender, male for me, uh, clan or tribe would be Jenkins. And, and then lastly, is your personal ego. That's my name, Robert, who I am. I'm Robert, okay? This is my name. I'm Robert. So my personal ego, those are the four things that the world gives you as a covering to identify you. Now watch this. You'll never be able to deal with sorcery, watch this, in its completion if you can't think outside of these four things. This is a worldly covering, not your spiritual identity. God is not identifying you by a black man or white man. God is identifying you by a spirit connected to God. God is a spirit. What color is God? We're not trying to make God black. We're not trying to make God white. We're not trying to make God any. We're trying to make understand God in the spirit. Because if I miss God as a spirit, if I miss God as love and peace, if I miss God as truth, if I miss God as grace. So what if I have him as black and white? Do you know the spirit of it? Does it bring you into unity? You making him black or making him white, do it make us, do it endeavor to keep 
the unity of the spirit, that there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. So we can deal with all the symbolisms that look like it points towards that. But again, my identity, who I am, watch this, is based upon who God created me to be in the image of God, watch this, in the likeness of God, which is a spiritual thing. Now, this doesn't mean that I should ignore my race. This doesn't mean I should ignore my gender. This doesn't mean I should ignore my tribe. This just means that the information concerning my race and concerning my tribe and concerning my gender and concerning my personal issue, uh, ego must be filtered through the spirit. It must be filtered through the spirit. And so I got to understand that so I can understand the purpose of my gender, the purpose of my race, the purpose of my tribe and the purpose of my personal ego and what to do with it. Because I got to be led by the spirit. I can't be led by my race. I got to be led by the spirit. Can't be led by my tribe. I can't be led by that. And so I got to understand spiritual identity. Watch this to versus worldly covering. If not sorcery. And there is racism, even in the race. There is racism, even in my clan, in my gender. And so what happens is sorcery is confusing us about all these worldly coverings. So now I don't know how to find out who I am because I'm egotistical based upon because I'm Robert. You don't talk to me that way. Don't you know who I am? See, and so all those things mess me up because I'm trying to deal with a level of control, but my personal ego, watch this, doesn't have enough wisdom to deal with it on its own, okay? It has to know who I am from God to deal with this. So I'll become, I'll either use sorcery or surrender to sorcery, even, watch this, even after identifying these things, if I don't apply wisdom to my own race, to my gender, to my clan. Because right now, sorcery is messing everybody up. So you don't know if you're male or female. You have a right to choose. Uh, this is why most men, they're being feminized. They're being castrated. All this because sorcery will castrate your gender. Uh, 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 sorcery will have you hating your race or loving your race above measure. Okay? Watch this. All these things. Or identifying yourself. You won't identify with God. You don't want to be spiritual, but you want to be a black man. All these different things. Things, okay, and so these are very key. And so again, I'm going to talk about a broad perspective of sorcery. It bleeds into everything. So nothing is off uh, conversation. Nothing is off the table. We got to deal with it all from a biblical point of view and from a spiritual point of view, so we can get clarity. Because if I really came from heaven, if I really came from God, only the Creator can know how I'm designed to operate. The world can't tell me that's what the Bible said, love of the world, neither the things that are in it, because it cannot be the one that identifies me. My father has to identify me. My father, again, I got to go back to the father. My father has to, and not only do my father has to identify me, my relationship with the inward law. I'm going to get to Moses in a minute. The inward law going to tell me who I am. When I may conf be confused about my race, I'm confused about my clan. I'm confused about my gender. I may be confused, watch this, about my personal ego. It may have me all messed up. But because I have a relationship with the Father, he makes it clear for me so that sorcery, because sorcery now is working in these four coverings, and we are so confused and messed up by these four things, okay? Okay, is this spiritual warfare? Without a doubt, this is absolutely spiritual warfare, Pastor Peterson. Absolutely. And we don't deal with that. The, the spirit comes to attack that, the babies, their identity, okay? And so that's exactly what I've been dealing with. Spiritual identity, okay? Very key, all right? So that, that's point number one, understanding your spiritual identity, okay? Above your worldly covering. Because there are people who know that they're black, know that they're white, but don't know who the father is. You're still lost to the father's voice, which means you're still lost to your identity because only the father can name the baby. Okay? This is why I need to be very careful. And not that I'm attacking some things, but I am the designed attack to deal with every form of sorcery that confuses us. Remember, sorcery confuses your identity. One of the major works of sorcery is to never allow you to know who you are from a spiritual place, okay? 
The sorcery will have you so involved in your clan, in your family rights, but you'll never know who your spiritual rights are. They'll have you so involved with your race, but you'll never know human race, how to work together with one another. So there's ne never, every joint don't supply because you don't deal with certain people. You only talk to certain people. You only deal with people in your religion. Huh? If you're not Kojic, I don't talk to you. If you're not apostolic, I don't know you. And so all these things separate us because the worldly covering will divide you. But when you understand, watch this, sorcery will divide you, but you understand God's way, watch this, is to unite us, to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit. We are oneness. Jesus' prayer was, I pray that they become one as we are one. And so sorcery is dividing us. When Moses let down that rod, he let down one snake. When they came, they, they brought magicians, they brought all kinds of different people, and there were many snakes. The one snake devoured all the snakes, because it's the oneness, and until we come into oneness, we'll never deal with, watch this, the spirit of sorcery that works in many different ways. Many different ways, okay? But God's way, watch this, brings us in together. And so I got to love my brother, but break the spell off my brother. I cannot attack my brother trying to go after sorcery. I have to realize that that's my brother. You see, and so but we don't want to come together. Jesus said, I got sheep not of this fold. We don't want to deal with sheep that's not of our fold because we don't see the oneness, the oneness, the oneness and sorcery. When you don't see, when you don't see oneness, that's sorcery. You think you are the only one knowing you're the only one right. You're the only one that can teach. You're the only one that can do that. That's all sorcery. That's division. That's division acting like unity, but it's divided. It's many snakes. Ooh, okay. Very key. All right, watch this. So point number two. Let me change these numbers. Uh, point number two, you got to release the rod. You got to release the rod. The rod represents a lot of things. It represents a staff of people that God connects you to. There are people that God will place in your life from the time you were born to the time you would die. Uh, there is people that God will place in your life that you have to learn to release them. Release them sometimes is allowing them to operate in who they are in your life. Allowing them to be authentic. Okay. A lot of times sorcery Sorcery is a is is a master at connecting you to false friendship. People who will never benefit your life, who become a liability and not an access. You got to understand that. But the whole thing is that God wants to connect you. And the more you become into oneness, the more you allow the spirit of God to, that they're one, one Lord through all and all above all the more you do that you'll see that there are people already connected to you you don't have to go all over the world to find them they would god would draw there's a gathering of the winds there are people that come from the north the south the east the west these are different directions these are also different mindsets so they don't have to see it the way you see it but but they but the object of what they're looking at is christ the, the love of god is what they're looking at and so they may have a different way of how they approach it but the whole Gold is oneness, okay? And so you got to know how to release them. So release them is allowing them to function and being authentic in your life and being a blessing to you to help you overcome. I have learned so many things from so many people. And there are people who did not grow up the way I grew up, but they had something to offer me in the place that I was going. My destiny was essential for me to connect with them, to hear how God tells them. This is why sorcery always tried to make clones out of people and want to make everybody look like you. They're not going to look like you. They're not going to talk like you. They're not going to walk like you. They're not going to speak like you. They're not going to think like you. And you can't say that they're wrong. They're going to hell. They're the devil because they have a different way of thinking. No, they have a different way of processing so they can watch this, be able to deal with the diversity of snakes. Okay. One snake, one mind, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, but we'll be able to deal with that. That's very key, but we got to release it. Sometimes releasing it is allowing them to be authentic in your life. Allow people to know, I don't have to be cosmetic to be your friend. I can be me. I don't have to pretend. I don't have to dance to your music for you to believe that I'm not a part of you. Everybody who doesn't agree with you is not against you. And so you have to understand there's a rod, there's a set of people that God places in your hand, in your presence, in your uh, vicinity. And you have to know that. Also, it's a releasing of principles. There are things that you have picked up along your journey that is essential to deal with bondages. A lot of things that God is going to teach you will come out of bondage. 
many times you were in things that you now look back and say, that wasn't healthy for me. But there were some things you needed to learn in an unhealthy place so that you can go back to the unhealthy place and free other people. You got to know how to use the rod and release it. There's some rods of of understanding. There's some rods of philosophies. There's some uh, rods of theology. There's some uh, rods of ideas that God has given you and you got to release it. A lot of times sorcery have not been confronted in your life because you won't release what God gave you. God gave you an idea to deal with that. God gave you a thought. He visits you. He gave you a visitation, but you won't start it. You won't release it. You don't believe in it. You don't believe that that little ideal in your mind will free you from sorcery that's holding down financial income. There's streams of income. God want to put you in a place where there's four rivers flowing out of you. But because you don't believe, you will never release those ideas. You never go after those strategies. You never go after that business. You never step out of the boat. So you got to release what God has put in your hand. He put some people in your hand. He put some ideas in your hand. He put some concepts in your hand. He's put some, some strategies in your hand. You have books in your mouth. You got recipes in your mouth. You got all kind of things, but you got to release it. And the thing that God has given you will deal with the thing that's holding God's people down. God give every person medicine for somebody else's problem. You are here because a problem exists, but you got to release the medicine. You can't get offended and stay home and not do the medicine. That's why I tell many people, you can talk about Facebook all you want, but I thank God for, for, uh, Facebook because it allows me to release the medicine that's, that's in my mouth. I'm called for nations. I know it. I know it. I remember when I was pastoring, God says, you are not called for the congregation. You are called for the nation. You are called for the nation. That's why I can preach every day an hour and a half, teach an hour and a half. I, I was choking the people at my church, giving them so much because I was trying to give a congregation what was designed for a nation. You got to release what's in you. And, and, and this is very key because you can't deal with, with sorcery outside watch this of you or sorcery that's on other people if you haven't deal with the sorcery that's stopping you from believing what's in your hand. Now I talked about it yesterday. When you release these ideas, they're going to turn into something you've never seen before and your first thing that fear may show up Fear tries to show up in transition of development. It tries to make you afraid of your own greatness. So a lot of times, sorcery has not been broken because you're afraid to walk out of a place. You're afraid to start brand new. You're afraid to move to a new city. You are afraid to get on Facebook and just release it out your mouth. You're afraid to say, I can make clothes too. You're afraid to even make the statement. You got to release the rod. You got to release the authority. There was authority in every idea that God has given you. There is authority in every statement that God has given you. Quit celebrate everybody else when there's a word in you. We thank God for every minister, for what everybody else is doing, but you are a minister. You have a word. You have an idea. You have power. You have a duty. There are seeds in you. Don't let everybody eat your apple and taste you by all the things you had to suffer and say how good this is, but then you never let what's in you ever get planted. You got to release the rod. That's the authority, okay? These are your experiences. You've been through some things by your experiences that has the ability and has the anointing and has the power to set people free. I say all the time, don't you die with my medicine. I need every man. Listen, sorcery will tell you you can't do it because you haven't been baptized. You can't do it because you ain't spoken tongues three times in a row. You can't do it because you don't have no education. You can't do it because you come out of a game. You can't do it because you got a, a prison record on, on your record. You can't do it because you struggle with homosexuality and lesbian. I'm telling you that God has an eternal call. Before you ever decide to sleep with a man as a man, before you ever decide to sleep with a woman, before you ever decided to, watch this, to murder somebody, whatever you have did, lie, well, before you ever made that decision or before you ever got raped, before you ever got molested, you had a calling on your life. Your spiritual identity did not start in the church. It did not start because somebody said, I think you got a calling. It did not start because you went to Bible school. It did not start because somebody recognized you can run. It started before you was in your mother's womb. 
Before you was in your mother's womb, I knew you. I formed you. You are only down here because you've already heard your assignment from a heavenly place. Oh, that kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven is a divine place from within. It's not up. It's from within. You got to let it out. You got to let. The most powerful prophetic word in the Bible is the word let. Let. Let there be, let there be, let there be light. Release it, release it. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Release it, release it. You got to release what's in you, what's in you that was in you before you failed, before you sinned, before you lied, before your mother was born, before your father. What was in you that God placed from a heavenly place, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, you got to release it. And these things, watch this, they come at their best through your experiences. You didn't know you was that powerful. You didn't know you was that strong. You didn't know you was that courageous until you went through something and you still got up. You went through something and you still overcame. This is, watch this, this is when your experiences now reveal the wisdom that's in you. Woo! Okay? Point number two, release the rod, power. When you use your experiences to improve a better life for you and others, why did you go to hell in your life and not come out with keys? Jesus went to hell and when he came out, he had, he had keys. You got to come out with access, authority. Everything that the devil wants you, listen, this is the wisdom. The wisdom is the proper application of my experience. I got to know how to see my experience. I can't let my experiences identify me. Was I raped? Yes. But am I victimized of being raped? No. Why? Because I would never let the rape identify me. Because my identity comes before I was born. My identity comes before the experience. And so the wisdom has to say, if my identity came before the experience, then what is the purpose of the experience? I got to have the right perception of the experience. Experience so that the experience will not, watch this, put a spell on me, will not put me in captivity. When you have the eyes, the wisdom to look at every experience from the lenses of love and from the lenses of light, now sorcery can't work on you because you have wisdom to deal with sorcery. You have wisdom because you have your identity. When you know what you who you are, you can deal with experiences properly. And now the experience gave you wisdom because wisdom came out of your identity in the midst of your experience. So you go through things, but you say, I know who I am. This don't change me. If I'm in a pig's pen, I'm still the son. If I waste all the money, I'm still a son. So if I'm still a son, what's the purpose of the pig pen? It's for me to come to myself, to know who I am, to recognize that, that I have a Father, I'm going home. I got a father. I don't have to settle for this witchcraft spirit that made me move immaturely, this sorcery that, that, that convinced me to leave the father's house. I'm going home. See? So now I got wisdom because wisdom says get up. Wisdom says stop crying. Wisdom says say no. Wisdom says I'm doing that. I will not subject myself to that. I know how to apply Wisdom in the midst of any situation, anything I have experienced, I know how to apply wisdom. Okay? Now, I'm, now what I just told you is very, 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 very powerful. Sorcery only works when you don't use wisdom in the situation. In every experience, sorcery only works when wisdom is not being applied. Woo! Good to see you, Pastor Jeff. Do you say it again? Sorcery only works when wisdom is not being applied. If you apply wisdom to the situation, sorcery can't work. Because wisdom has dominion with the wise domain. It's where the wise live. It's proper application of the illumination of the information. See? It's that. And when you do that, even though I experience some things. Wisdom said that's not the right choice. Wisdom says that's not the right place to go. Wisdom says no to it. And so it, de it doesn't change my experience, but it never allows my experience to identify me. I am marked by my experience. I am never identified by my experience. 
Woo! And when I take wisdom, I take the wisdom in the experience. And now what the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. When you change how you see things, how you see things will change. Okay, very key. That's point number two. Release the rod. Release the rod. Point number three. Uh, point number three. When you have false perceptions, how you perceive a thing is everything. I always say it. I've been saying it for years. Uh, uh, um, perception brings reception. If you don't, if you can't perceive right, you'll never receive right. Perception brings reception, okay? The woman at the well said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. When her perception changed, her reception changed. A lot of times you're not receiving what you could receive from your husband or your wife because you never have the right perception of who he is or who she is. What is your perception? Okay, very key because perception Perception deals with the reality of the world, okay? When you get into the spiritual reality, the spiritual reality, you move into what you know. When you move into the worldly reality, you move in what you perceive. You got to always apply spiritual wisdom, what you know, to your perception in the world, in this life. Like, I know I sit in heavenly places. I know that. That's why Job said, this one thing I do know. Even belief is a dangerous stage if you stay there too long. Because belief can be tampered with with enough evidence. See, that's why some people say, well, I don't believe that anymore. Because their belief was tampered with with enough evidence, with, a, with the change of perception. Because belief is the entering stages. This is why belief can create something that's anti-God. And you will believe it because you see the evidence in the world. It's not what you know, it's what you see in the world. And so you'll respond to that. It's going to be very careful with emotional theoretically, uh, emotion theoretically concepts. Because it'll cause you to believe it. And because you believe it, you see it. Not because it's true from from, from spiritual reality, but because it's true from natural reality. This is why many people can't walk by faith because their natural reality says that's water. That's water. And so we say step out of the boat, you're going to drown because the natural reality says you can't walk on water. That's a natural reality. So put you there. Now, perception says that. That's perception. But when you get to what I know, God, I know that God said, bid me to come. And so if I walk on the word and never allow any distractions to come against the word, I'm not walking on water. I'm walking on what he said. I'm walking on the word. And so sorcery always comes to bring distractions against the mental, watch this, conception conception, not perception, the mental conception of the word. This is why you got to hold on. It says, Abraham believed God unto, unto righteousness. Watch this. But even though he, he never attained it, he never had any reality, evidence of it, he staggered not because he never let, watch this, the word of God be taken from him by the bird. The bird looks for the seed and tries to bring distractions so that he can steal the word from, from you. When he does that, your perception of reality kicks in and you begin to sink because you think you're walking on water. Your perception is off. You think you only have two fish and five loaves of bread. Your perception is off. And so you have to understand that I got to allow what I know from the spirit. That's why they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. What is the truth that God says concerning my experience? What's the truth? Because the truth sets me free from false perceptions that imprison me. Sorcery creates false realities. So most of the time, even in church, we are creating a false reality. This is why I told you, what's the difference between a miracle, what's this, and magic? Because magic produces snakes too. 
Just like a miracle turns around at the stake, so that's magic. And so a lot of people go to church and you experience magic. How do we know? Because it does not sustain itself. When it's tied to a spiritual place, when it's tied to what we know in God, it sustains and your fruit shall remain. But when it does not remain, watch this, it's based upon a belief system that may be based upon your perception. When you no longer believe that, you no longer have the evidence of that. And so they say that 98% of the people who come out of these crusades who got healed, Within months, they back with the same cancer. They back with the same pain. Why? Because they get the trick bamboozled into an emotional thrill that at that time, I believe God. The music is hyped. The, the organ is playing. The drums is playing. People hollering and screaming. People pass out on the floor. So my emotional energy charge ties into it. Watch this. Ties into it, and at that moment, I believe. Do you believe you? Do you believe you heal? Yes, 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 yes. Touch your head, you fall out, and then when you get home, uh oh, the winds, the winds, the winds come, toss to and fro. They say you sure, and all of a sudden you're doubting. Should I have given a thousand dollars? Was I emotionally charged to give that thousand dollars? Did they fool me through the organ, through the hype? Did they type? Did they tap into my, my senses? My sensuality and caused me to believe something at that moment. And then when that moment is over, my leg is back hurting. When that moment is over, I'm back in pain. When I get in the car, I'm thinking I shouldn't have gave them my electric money, my gas money. And I feel like I've been bamboozled. Why? Because it did not come from what I know the truth from a heavenly place. It came from false perceptions in a world that I can trick you in. Woo! You're right, lying signs and wonders. The other day, me and my wife, we took our grandkids uh, to this place in New Orleans called Optimum. And they got these things you can put on your face, these glasses. It blew me away. And I'm looking at the game and I'm seeing the people there. But the minute I put these things on my eyes, it took me to a whole other place. I mean, I couldn't even see myself. I became invisible. I know I was there. I know I'm, I know I'm standing in this room and my wife is somewhere over there eating, eating. But when I put the glasses on, I couldn't see my wife. I couldn't see myself. All I could see was this thing that looked like a box that had me in that I was not boxing in. I seen these monsters come to me and I got a gun in my hand. I knew when I stepped in, I had no gun. And they gave me this gun. I can't. What's this gun? And I'm shooting monsters and I'm going through all the emotions and people on the outside, they know the truth. They know the truth. And they're looking at me going through all these things like I'm seeing something. And in my mind, I'm seeing something because something is in my eyes. Yes, and this is the magic of sorcery to put you in a place and now you're panicking. You think your bills is going to overtake you. Cancer are going to come and you trying to shoot everything. But all you got to do. And so what I did after a while, I said, uh oh, I, this ain't true. So I would every now and then I would lift it up so I can see the truth. I said, OK, this is a game. And I put it back down. Because it was messing with my mind so much that how can just something over my eyes transport me to a place that's not real? And, have, and, and guess what? I loved it. I said, ooh, I'm going back. I want to play the game that gives me a false reality. What if we have fell in love with the sorcery of church? That gives us a false reality that we are destroying the devil. I'm taking dominion and you just in a game with something over your eyes. <laughs> you hear me? I think they call it virtuality. Okay? False perceptions can imprison you by your experiences. When you don't have wisdom... To know that this is not the truth. I am not a nobody because you said it. That's not the truth. I'm not dumb because I don't have the education that you have. That's not the truth. I'm not ugly because I, I, I have to be in a certain weight. I got to be a certain color. That's not true. And I got to come out of this virtuality 
of this false, and, 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 and what happens is the devil uses our experiences without us applying wisdom. Mm -hmm. So he can make us think that what we are experiencing is real. Mm -hmm. You're nothing. You're dumb. You always got to lean on somebody else. You can't study for yourself. You can't build for yourself. You know you can't make it. You know you're not strong. You know nobody would ever marry you. You know you're not going to be able to do that. You know this. And so this is form of sorcery. It, it distracts you from who you are. It robs you of your destiny. It robs you of your identity. And what we do, with the lack of wisdom never tells you, take that off your eyes. You need to hear a real word. Faith come by hearing. You need to hear a real word concerning who you are. See? So false perception can experience you. But wisdom in that same room will show you how to handle that experience. And now you can bless others. Why? Because I was in the game like you was in the game. You didn't hear it. I was in the game like you was in the game, and I saw that this is a game. So I can tell you, this is the matrix. That's not air that you're breathing. You're faster than that, Neo. I can help you get out of sorcery because I was in sorcery, but God brought me out, showed me the truth, and now that I see the truth, I'm not letting false perceptions... Watch this. Be your guide. That's why I wrote in the book, The Journey of False Perceptions. I was in prison to what I thought my daddy didn't love me. I was in prison that, that nobody sees me. Nobody understands me. I was in prison, uh, but but God says, here, put this on. I want you to see what, not, not put it on, take that off. Take off what you're looking through. Take off that pain, all those things, and you will see it for really for what it is. Do you know it? You got to know the truth from the uh, from an eternal place so that your perception of reality will not guide your life. Amen. And now you can bless other people how to get out of the matrix. You're in a matrix. You got to get out, Neo. You're the one. But you think you're Mr. Anderson because they gave you a name. They gave you a color. They gave you a tribe. You're in your personal ego. And these four things... Making you think that I got to protect my race. I got to protect my clan. I got to protect my ego. I got to protect it. I got to protect my gender. Or I can choose what gender I want to be. And you're missing the spiritual principle. And all of this is sorcery. Sorcery will confuse your gender. Sorcery will have you egotistical. Sorcery is all. It, it is in all things. Okay. Very key. My time is... Ooh. Yeah. My time is almost at hand. Point number three. Thank you for sowing where I'm sowing where we're going. Thank you for sowing. Point number three. Moses' name. I'll start here and I'll pick up on it tomorrow. Moses' name means to draw out from the water. Is it three A? I'm sorry. That's number four, baby. Thank you. Point number four. Moses' name means to draw out from the water. To draw out from the water. <sighs> he was called to draw out a level of internal, internal spiritual laws. There are people that God has raised, trained, equipped, to see at a greater level. Good to see you, Dad. Love you, man. To see at a greater level. You are to draw out. There are people who will fight battles for you because they've been designed to do it. Everybody will not confront sorcery at the same level. Moses confronted Pharaoh. All the people had to do was believe in the leadership of Moses and follow him out. You have to know when you've been called to fight battles that others will not fight. You also have to know how not to fight battles that does not belong to you. The wisdom is to know what battles you're supposed to fight. When you're called to draw out, there's a level of boldness that comes to you. And sometimes in the movie uh, Equalizer, I think I'm going to watch it again today. I love it. Number one, 
Then the, the lady asks Denzel Washington in Equalizer, she says, why are you doing this? He says, well, when you see somebody in trouble and sometimes you interfere, not because you know the person, but because you can. You've been trained. You've been equipped. There are many of those who are listening today. You will deal with sorcery because your name means to draw out. You have been given the boldness to do it. You've been given the encouragement to do it. That's why God trained you to be an assassin killer. He trained you to be a ninja. He trained you to handle. This is why a lot of times in your life, you went through a loneliness period where God wouldn't let nobody touch you. You were by yourself. God was working on you. This is 40 years in the backside of the desert because you're called to confront some things. And so you have to know that. You have to know that when you're called, God, I am assigned to handle so many things in God. But because of that, my, my raising was different. My birthing was different. When I didn't have wisdom, I looked at my life as a negative. When God opened my eyes and I was able to embrace the truth, the wisdom says that my life was purposely raised so that I'm not afraid. I can deal with false teachers, false apostles, false prophets. I can deal with religion. I'm not afraid of you. I don't need them so I can lead them. So, so, so because of that, I was called to do that. I was called to confront some pharaohs in other people's lives. You are called to, so don't, in other words, don't let nobody dumb you down. Oh, you too strong. No, you need to be strong. The problem is you using your strength of the children of Israel when you are designed to face pharaohs. You are designed to face leadership. You are designed to face pastors, apostles. You are designed to face systems of thinking. You are divine. You are designed. There are many of you, you are designed to deal with every level. This is why, again, I'll bring up his name. We've been able to talk the last couple of days. Brother Berean. His language, he can talk to you about the Hebrew Israelites. He can talk to you about Israelites. He can talk to you about Pentecostalites, any type of lights. He can talk to you about uh, apologetics. He can talk. You can't be, make nobody make you feel bad because you lean towards apologetics or you lean towards legalism or you lean towards spiritual warfare or you lean towards intercessory prayer or you lean towards uh, loving God's people. Whatever your leg may be, whatever you may be grace to do, you got to know that you are called to walk in that area to draw people out. And if you come against your training, there'll be some things that you got to confront that you've been castrated. That's why you can't let nobody tell you how to operate you. You got to know what you call. There's a reason why uh, God didn't let you get married till you was 40. There's a reason why some things did not work for you. You were that close to walking in some doors that you wanted, but God wouldn't let you do it. There's a reason why God let certain books to come to you. All You got books don't nobody ever heard of. You read stuff. You heard stuff. You say things. This is because there there is something in you that's supposed to draw something out of somebody else. So the way you think, your the way you articulate things, the way you feel, people will make you feel bad. Why are you always in your feelings? I need to be in my feelings. My calling need this level of sensitivity. Without the level of sensitivity, there's some sorcery that nobody will pick up, but I'm going to pick it up because I've been made that way. I may be a crying prophet, that I cry all the time. You're not going to make me feel bad because my crying side of me helps people get free. Moses, your name means to draw out. And you are going to do it. And you're going to confront some things because you can. Because you're the one that can stand up and say that's not God. You're the one that can fight for other people. Everybody can't fight for themselves. They ain't called to fight for themselves. But you're called to do it. So I'm going to tell you it's not God. I'm going to tell you God going to do it. You're called, you're called to live. You can live by faith. I, I feel the Holy Ghost. Many of you right now, you are living and look like just enough to make it. But your calling is to show people how to live by faith. There are some people, God ain't going to never let you have more than enough. Your more than enough is how rich you are in faith. You trying to see how rich you are and how much money you got in the bank. You better know how much faith.
faith you got in the bank. How much faith you got in the bank. Because that's your calling. You're able to do that. Oh, you got to know it. You're called. Some of you are you're raised to fight Jezebels. In any form of control, it do something to you. You've been having a problem with yourself. You've been saying, why every time I run into this spirit, I can't help it. I can't help it. I just, it bothers me. It irritates me because that's who you are. If every time you walk in somebody's house, every time you walk in a church, you keep seeing something on the floor. It bothers you. That picture is crooked. I don't care nothing about that picture. I didn't even notice that picture was crooked, but you did because you are an administrator and your calling bothers you. If you're a teacher and you go to a church and they're hooping all day long, it's driving you crazy. It's driving you crazy because you are a teacher. You've been called to be that way to draw people out. Moses, they means to draw out from the water. There are things that you will confront because you can. Because you can. You've been assigned to do it. You've been assigned to deal with demonic activity. Your whole life may be to expose witchcraft. And people don't understand it. Every time I look around, she talk about witches, 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 witches. I'm called to deal with that. Somebody else, every time I call them, they in prayer. Do they never not pray? You've been called to pray. You got to know what's in you that draws things out of people. Moses. Okay. I wanted to stop, but I'm going to give you one more point because it ties to this point. I'll stop here. Point number five, the birth of Moses. His name means to draw out what's in you that's supposed to draw something out of somebody else. It's why you can't allow yourself under sorcery to come against your identity because sorcery wants you not to believe in who you are so you can't help somebody else. I'm supposed to draw this out of you. I'm supposed to draw this out of you. I thank God for my dad in the ministry, Apostle Michael Scott. And every time I talk to him, he draws something out of me. Every time I talk to him. I was telling him yesterday, you know, when I was pastoring, and I have many sons and daughters. I probably got over 100 sons and daughters in God. Literally, I probably, if I wrote down every person that God has put me in their life to father them, I don't know how many people I have. Really, I mean, fathered for that season. Watch this. But in all of my life, most of my sons, they will record me. They'll call me for nuggets. Hey, man, when you think about John chapter 5, and they'll say, hold on, let me get a pen. And I, I've been doing this all my life. For the first time in my life, I met a father. When he talk, I say, hold on, Dad, let me get my laptop. And I write down what he say. See? You got to know that there are people in your life that they draw something out of you and you can't fight against them. This is why we got to come together as a church. Stop, stop joining in with the devil, with people who've been skilled to do that one thing. And because you don't understand the total vision, you think they're not balanced. There are balance. There are things that Moses was called to do that that he, there were things that Moses was called to do, but there were things that he was not called to do. It was Joshua to do it. And you got to know, don't try to make Moses Joshua and don't try to make Moses feel bad because he don't have what Joshua had. He ain't supposed to have it. Wisdom says I must operate in what I've been given. He didn't ask Moses. He didn't tell Moses wherever you go. He said, what's in your hand? He never asked Joshua what's in your hand. We're comparing and we're tearing down specialists. There are people that you will not understand, but sit back and watch them draw it out. Don't criticize them when you don't understand it. You may not understand a Moses. You may not understand the journey of Moses. Many times you got to understand Joseph need to be put in the pit. He got to get to the pit so he can get to the prison, so he can get to the palace. We, what we, what the problem is, is that sorcery have us judging people and you killing the babies before they raised up. Moses' mother got to hide him. There's some people who has to be hidden. And, and, and sorcery wants you to tell us where, where the baby Moses at. 
Sorcery, it wants you to tell all the people that just walk in the church and you see that gift. I dare you help the leadership kill this baby. You got to be like the midwives who say, I heard what sorcery says, but I'm going to let this baby live. I'm going to say, I'm a, oh, we don't like this kind of stuff. See, this kind of stuff messes up. Uh, I'm going to say that the baby came out too fast. The midwives lied to protect the timing of God. We don't like this kind of stuff. Same thing with Rahab. They, they, the spies went in that land. Rahab was the prostitute. Oh, but even though she was the prostitute, she was positioned at the right corner. She was on the right corner. There's some people that's going to draw you out of some things. They may not be all the way where you think they should be, but they've already been positioned. God is positioning people. He uses vessels for honor and vessels for dishonor. He uses both vessels. Stop. You don't understand the journey. You don't understand it, baby. You need to be hid. He needed to be trained. Moses had to sit under Pharaoh. The Hebrews was not allowed to read and write. Well, Moses, you got to write the first five books of the Old Testament. And so I'm going to let the enemy train you how to read and write so you can write about the enemy later. If I let you not be raised by Pharaoh, you won't be equipped to write the first five books of the Old Testament. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to let the enemy train you how to defeat him. Uh oh, but if we don't know it, sorcery would expose it because you don't understand everybody's journey. Yes, God. You saying they're out the wheel? No, they are being positioned. To be positioned. Right. They're going to draw some people out. Saul is going to become Paul one day. He's going to draw some people out. Moses was a murderer. But I need him for his calling as he grows up to, to draw him. I needed to, to bother him. Watch this. So it really wasn't about killing the man. It was about killing any system that, it, that, that enslaves our people. Moses, when you grow up, when Moses grows up, he grows up to realize that I cannot stay under a system. I got all that I need. I got all that I need. That's good, Brother Michael. The wealth of the wicked is laid for the righteous. We thought it meant money, but maybe it meant the wealth of the wicked is their knowledge of how to gain it. It's their cunningness. See, it's, it's the philosophies. They always been after this. Nebuchadnezzar, the Hebrew boys, bring me the greatest magicians, doctors, lawyers, biologists. That's wrong with the church. We live in it. All we know is all we know is one side. You better know the God side of biology. You better know the God side of science. You better know the God sides of mathematics. There's a God side to all sizes. Oh, the gathering of the four winds. You were born for this. Okay, I got to stop. Point number five. The birth of Moses represents man's development in consciousness of the law internal. There is an internal law that God puts in you. When it's time for you, you're not going to be able to hide from that law anymore. You're not going to be able to help yourself. Most of the time, people don't know it because you ain't grown up. But when your, when your journey is done, when you're 40 years, he spent 40 years with Pharaoh, 40 years on the backside of the desert, and 40 years, watch this, with the children, leading the children of Israel. 120 years, and when he died, his eyes was not dim. He still had so much vision. He still had so much insight in him. Watch this. But there was a law in him that as he grew up, it wouldn't let him settle with church anymore. There was a law in him that when he grew up, it wouldn't let him settle with sorcery anymore. When he grew up, there was a law in him that would not let him stay and watch them abuse the very people he called to set free. When you understand that there's a time in your life, maybe your time has come. Watch this. When God is raising up the Moses in you and this all of a sudden, You've been in church all your life, but now religion is bothering you. Now, uh, not studying is bothering you. All of a sudden, now the, the church abuse is 
bothered you. Now you become a problem. You was the one that was with us, woman of God. You the one helped me start this church. Why are you giving me so much problem? Because the internal law of Moses is saying there's something wrong. There's something wrong, pastor. I can't do it no more. I can't stay here and act like you are really my father. You are not. God is. I can't act like this is what I'm born to be. I've been born to set these people free, not to make slaves out of them. And when the Moses grows up in you, he won't let you tolerate sorcery anymore. I can't tolerate you taking the people's money and robbing them. You don't have no storehouse. You really don't love the sheep. All these things. And before you know it, the Moses in you rises up and he seems to become violent. Oh, he's a troublemaker now. She's a troublemaker now. Why? Because the Moses in her had rose up the calling from within. Can't take it no more. I'm done with the same song, same, same messages, same teaching, same Sunday, 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 Sunday. When we going to have a Monday church? When we going to do something for the community? You can't take it no more. These non-studying, non-praying, non-fasting, non-growing religion, the Moses in you will grow up and all of a sudden when you was faithful and loyal to you, yes sir, and God bless you, hallelujah, highly favored, gets on your nerves. You tired of looking at your neighbor. You're tired of waving your hand like you just don't care. You get tired of it because the moves is in you. I've been called to draw some people out. I ain't called to enslave people. I ain't called to kill people. I I'm called to set them free. There's something in me. I don't know what it is, but I can't stay here no longer. I can't do it. I don't care how many buildings I got. Moses had rooms. Moses had access. Moses had authority. Moses had favor. I will leave it all for freedom. And when that Moses rise up in you, you will walk out of the girl you had in May. I couldn't take it no more. It wasn't God. My purpose was calling me. My anointing was calling me. I can't do it. You may not like me, but I got to go. 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 Because the Moses in me rose up. Woo! See that? It represents the man's development in consciousness of the internal law. Something is saying there's more. Something in me is saying there's more to this scripture. Something is saying to me there's more than just shouting and speaking in tongues. Something is saying there's more. And you can't do it. You can't stick with it. It's the birth of Moses. Father, I bless your name for helping us to see wisdom over sorcery, to not ignore the call, the call from within. There's something more. And I can't get this from a theology college. I can't get this. I got to get it from you. There's something I got to learn. I got to get it from you. I got to go to an isolated place. I got to go to a wilderness. I got to go to where nobody knows me. I got to go to a place where nobody pulls up my title and nobody pulls up what car I drive. I got to go to a place where nobody says you got a wonderful house. I got to go to a place where I just can be with you because there's something in me that's saying there's more and you want to get to it and I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Ah, bless your people. Touch them in the name of Jesus so they can be free from this level of sorcery. Yes, they can respond to the call that's in them. Ah, God. Yes, Can't ignore it anymore. It'll make you leave it and make you walk out. You ain't gonna be able to do it. I know you're trying to make that relationship work, but uh, it's gonna make you walk out of it. Cause I gotta call it. Uh, I love y'all, but I gotta go because I gotta call it. I gotta call in something in me, something in me. I can't keep watching this stuff happen. I can't keep acting like I'm dumb. I can't keep acting like I don't see what I see. I see it, and it's bothering me now. I used to not even bother me, but it bothers me now because I'm growing up. I'm growing up. I'm growing up. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Respond to the word. For many of you, you, you just, uh, this, is what, this is where you're going through a frustration because you trying to stay in a place that your calling says this is not it. This is, uh, your journey for this place is over. You got to know when your journey for that place is over. <laughs> and what you learn in that journey is going to help you for your next place. 
You can't come back to a place and set people free if you never left. You can't set them free by being a part of it. Moses didn't go back and join Pharaoh's church. He went back, he came back with a word. You got a word, but you didn't join and allow sorcery to control you. You can't have a word for a place that controls you. You can't have a word for a place. And you may not understand, why did you move me out? Why did you have me, why did you have me say that? See, Moses killed the man, but we are killing things because your last time when it's time for you to leave, you said something that revealed that you was not what we thought you were. We thought we had you under control too, but you said something at that last meeting. You said something at that last service, and we see, oh, you are one of them. You really want people free. You, you one of them. You really want order in this house. Oh, you one of them. And that's why you got to go. Because once you are identified, when the soldiers saw, wait a minute, did Moses just kill us? He's supposed to be one of us, and now he's killing us for doing them wrong? Moses left as a fugitive because his time was up. And when your time is up, God will remove your covers. You are an undercover agent trained by Pharaoh to go back to Pharaoh. But when your training is over, God will expose your secret to him. He's going to expose your heart. And that's why you can't stay because your heart has been exposed. Then you want to see a real church. You want to see a real move. You want to see what love really looks like in a marriage. You want to see people healed and delivered. See? That's right. Your speech betrays you. Your actions. Why are you defending the people we trying to control, Moses? Because my time is up. Why are you taking up for the underdog? Why are you agreeing? You, we've been beating the people. We've been taking their money. We've been not giving them. We've been giving them milk. We've been telling them they're sheep. All of a sudden now you're questioning. Why are you questioning what we've been doing all our lives? Because your time has come. God going to do some things with people who are listening here. You're going to walk with God and God is going to give you something. Or, and I'm going to talk about it tomorrow on the backside of that desert. You're going to get some wisdom from God that when you come back to set people free, they're going to know you've been with God. You couldn't say what you're saying. You got too much boldness when you came back. You must have been with God. You ain't scared of us. You used to, used to be scared to say something. Now you look me in the eye. You must have been with God. And this is what God is doing. We thank you. God bless you. Don't forget tonight, 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock tonight, Prophet is James Summers. Let's everybody meet him there in my father's house. I know there's a word from the Lord. Let's take heed to that. Uh, intercessory prayer, our prayer partners, I'll be notifying you this week. We are doing our first revival probably in March or maybe April. Divine Insight Ministries is doing their first revival, but we are doing it as a collective. So it's going to be about maybe 30 or 40 ministers. We're doing a 24-hour revival. That's what I'm trying to set up. I feel it in my spirit. A 24-hour revival with about 30 or at least, yeah, let's say 24 preachers an hour apiece. 24 ministers or ministries, okay, so we're going to do that and we're going to support a revival probably in April. 24 ministers, an hour apiece, 24 hour revival, saturating in the spirit. OK, and so we're going to do that. That's coming up uh, sometime in April. I, I believe it is. All right, I got to get the date from the Lord. Spend some more time and see exactly what he will be do that. OK, don't forget to cruise. Please contact Amanda Pearson. 
for the instructions on the cruise. You don't want to miss that. Prophet James Summers, the day at 5 o'clock, don't miss that. Take heed to all the announcements. Get ready. Sister Nick Journey, she's coming on today. I believe so. Uh, I think it's 7.30. So let's get ready for her as well. All right? I love you. God bless you. Walk in God's favor. I'll see you tonight at 5 o'clock in my father's house. And I'll see you tomorrow. Part, part 3, Wisdom Over Sorcery. Love you. God bless you. Walk in God's favor.